Say good morning, everyone. Um, it's Monday morning, June 6. Um, if I've got the date right, I'm pretty sure it's Monday morning in any case. Um, and I want to welcome everyone bright and early. Um, I want to first go around the room to make sure everyone can see and be heard, be, be heard. And I'm just going to do it in the order I see the pictures on the screen. Paul? Present. Mike? Oh, I caught you with, with your mouth. Um, sorry, breakfast time. <laughs> ben? Present. It's Jonathan? Good morning. Great. Okay. Sean? Here. Phoebe? Here. Rupert? I'm here. Angelica? Here. Simone? Yes. And Alicia? Here. So I think... I think we're only missing Allison. Is that correct? If I'm, if I'm looking around the screen. And Tammy. And Tammy. Tammy. Yeah, we're miss, missing Tammy also. I don't see Tammy. Let me just double check participants that they didn't come in. No, I don't see them. Um, should I wait a few? What do you think? Should I wait a few more minutes? Mar Margaret can describe. She's Margaret's going to facilitate. Um, you can pull up the agenda, Margaret, if if you want to. It's a pretty straightforward. What this is a discussion that we're having until ten today. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Uh, well, I can anyway. Yes. Okay, so um, let me just recap uh, where we are. So um, as Kathy mentioned, the, the main event today is to have a discussion. There's no presentation by the design team, although they're here to answer any questions. Um, we're gonna, um, I'll come back to how I would suggest we approach it, but I would definitely say we're um, on our way to narrowing the choices and uh, focusing on the priorities. Um, we have a couple of other events going on this week. So um, probably most important on Thursday, there is a community forum where the community will get an introduction to um, some of the materials we've looked at, at the last in the last couple of days, as well as the project costs. And uh, Donna, I think we're all set up to actually get some input on priorities, correct? And then we have a meeting uh, June 13th, which is a Monday, a week from today, um, where at which point, if we haven't gotten there today, we really need to decide finally on the preferred option. And then we have a meeting on June 24th, which is a week from Friday, at which um, you all would be taking a vote to submit the preferred schematic report. So a lot going on, but then a break in the action. So Kathy, do you wanna add anything before we move on to the discussion? Um, no, I, I think, no, I don't think so. Um, just as, just to um, underscore what Margaret said about today, um, I thought now that we are all working with the matrix or trying to work with the matrix, um, we could be, potentially narrowing some of the options, but also identifying which of these criterias are the most important to us. Jonathan led off with some of that we did last time. So um, it's more if they're more important, it means whether they're highly favorable or less favorable matters more is the way I think about it, although all the criteria matter. So I think as we go through them, we're not trying to get to the, the final option choice, but if there are some we would like to eliminate today, that will make next Monday's discussion easier. You know, it will be minutes more focused. And I'm ceding the role of chair to Margaret, who becomes facilitator rather than chair. So I can be, right. <laughs> I can be one of all of us rather than um, having to watch for hands. So she'll watch for hands and she'll orchestrate the meeting. Um, and I am hoping, you know, we, I did double check the timing of this with everyone, because I still don't see um, either Allison or Tammy here. Um, 
So maybe we can, Mark, I'm turning it over to you. And so uh, why yep. don't we start and and to, to as much as possible, get everyone talking. So Okay. So I'm going to pull up the matrix that um, I sent out with a couple of final updates yesterday afternoon. Um, so let me do that. And then let's get started here with a conversation. So that looks like it. Okay, can everybody see that? So um, as I mentioned at the beginning, Kathy and I did you know, quite a bit of work trying to make this tighter. Um, and um, the first, I wanna ask a question and um, then talk about a couple ways we could approach this. So one question was, did anybody have any comments on the matrix before we get started in terms of things that should be eliminated or added to it or um, items that should be prioritized um, you know just as a reminder um, and it may be a little difficult to see on the screen but there were a handful of items um, that i've highlighted in uh, sort of a light purple on here that had been identified um, as priorities. So project cost is clearly one of them. Um, minimizing teaching and learning impacts during construction, optimizing energy efficiency and under site, minimizing building footprint and providing flexibility for expansion. Now the overall categories we have are building and site facts, which we're not actually gonna rank, they're there for reference. Um, construction cost is a category, equity and transition is a category, uh, educational is a category, building is a category, site is a category, and uh, at the bottom, last but not least, is community. So, before we launch any comments about things we should add back or eliminate before we get started. Hey, Allison. Going once, going twice, I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, so um, how about uh, any priorities, any other priorities people wanna add? Donna, there, uh, uh, Margaret, there are a couple of hands up. Okay, I see Rupert. Rupert? Uh, a couple of quick comments. Um, there's two categories, F. I think uh, community should be G. Um, yep, uh, you're right. Uh, and then um, I have some more sort of involved comments. Um, in terms of site, um, category F, uh, when I had reviewed the, the, the uh, site, uh, transportation and safety. Uh, previously, I was looking at our April uh, phase oh, concept one three story where Wildwood had a football shaped lot. But my recollection from the phasing diagrams uh, from the last meeting, it looks like we've managed to get a separated uh, uh, drop off and pick up at Wildwood. I'm still trying to find that in the archives, but um, I'm thinking that we won't see that much difference in terms of. Uh, pick up and drop off separation between the two buildings with that revised uh, drawing. And, and, and that's a question. Is that, did I read something wrong here? So your question is about the design options as it relates to pick up and drop off. Yes, and I, it, my recollection from the phasing diagrams is that uh, the Wildwood pick up and drop off change from the original, uh, from the uh, concept drawings before. So um, let me, since I have the ability to share, let me see if I can pull up that drawing quickly. Just give me a second. So I think the, the question um, is that on the on site, it looks like the circulation has is is on both sites. It works is what Rupert's asking, Donna. Right. I'm looking at the, the very last it. slide, page 14 of the of the phasing diagrams, and it shows uh, separate. Uh, circles uh, for two different separated drop-offs. So I don't see that that's really that much different between the two sites anymore, but maybe other people have different opinions. That, 
that yeah, was well well margaret you're gonna pull it up right yeah i am um i think and um tim can jump chime in too rupert i, I think the difference is the um queuing length and being able to um get the cars and the buses off the road or driveway i guess um but but you know pictures say a thousand words so maybe we can take a look at that coming up i remember this took a little bit to open here we go okay so which one are, did you want to look at rupert wildwood oh the very last page going to take a second to open. So here is Wildwood phase one. Yeah, if you can go to the final page. There phase you go. three. R Rupert is correct in that the site diagrams have developed to the point that we have separated car and bus drop off. So between the two sites, there are separate circulation paths. So that's the bus drop off mm -hmm. and this is the car. Right, so that being the case, my suggestion is um, in the site category that we take uh, uh, optimize safety and efficiency of vehicle circulation and that would include pedestrian arriving and leaving, vehicles arriving and leaving. Um, and then the next category, potential to mitigate traffic on and off site, uh, would be more of the adjacent traffic pass passing site uh, description. So, Robert, in a nutshell, you're talking about eliminating this item three that I have highlighted. I'm going to blow this up no, a little bit. No, I'm not. Oh, no. I'm, I'm suggesting that the criteria explanation incorporate items one and two from the next category. So there's only one item? No. If you include, what I'm trying to say is, uh, see where uh, your mouse is now? It says um, pedestrians arriving and leaving site, vehicles yep. arriving and leaving site. That would be incorporated into optimize the safety and efficiency of vehicle circulation. And then category four, potential to mitigate traffic. Uh, I think it makes more sense to have potential to mitigate traffic in the neighborhood of the site. Because that's what I think Got adjacent it. traffic passing uh, is really about is neighborhood. I don't know how people feel about those changes, but. Uh, well, I'll react. I, that's the way I was interpreting them. So I think you're, you're changing the definition, how the wording helps. So do you want to just also perhaps remove there um, where it says potential to mitigate traffic on and off site, just off site? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. So Margaret, I, you asked on other things that I would shade um, and it's from my, the discussion in terms of uh, shading for a priority. Priority, criteria. yeah. If you scroll down to the very bottom one, the outdoor space for community use for after school, outdoor space was listed as a priority. I mean, we've got it in more than once here, but one that to me, I thought we heard was a priority of, of the various criteria. Yep. That was I one. Agree. That's the only reason my hand was up. I agree with that. Okay. So I don't see any. Sean's hand is, can you see the, sh the little yellow hand goes up in the corner? Oh, yep. I see it now. Sean, you want to go? Yeah, um, so this one I probably should have mentioned earlier, but um, under the cost section, I don't know if it makes sense to include like ongoing operating costs as a criteria. I think it only varies really between the, 
the add reno options versus the uh, the new construction. But my understanding is if we do add reno, I I don't think the whole building will be net zero, right? So there would be some continued cost for um, the the other portion of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, no, um, no, no. We're we're designing it for any of the options to be net okay. zero. Okay. So even the in the yeah. add reno the the um, the existing building will still be net zero. Okay. So, I, yeah, I retract we're my providing, comment. Yep, we'll be providing enough PV on site to support net zero for the entire building. Okay, so the heating systems would be theoretically pulled the out. That are, okay. Yeah, yeah, totally gutted. It's totally gutted. I think Rupert would kill us if he had to maintain different systems in a building. Well, and and Rupert's hand is still up. Is that from before? Uh, no, I just wanted to give other people a chance, but I have another another one. Okay, go um, for it. In um, equity and transition C, um, where you're highlighted right now. Uh, no, sorry, that's where I'm highlighted. Um, yeah. Accessible or walking sounds like a yes no question, and so I would change that to accessibility by walking. Uh, which is then sounds more like we're comparing things. Um, and in terms of access to public transit, I think uh, in terms of criteria explanation, we maybe should expand that uh, beyond frequency of PBTA service to, um, uh, I don't know, something broader like a breadth of coverage of the town by, by bus route or something like that. So, uh, how's that? Something like that. I think because uh, I I did a bunch of I spent a lot of time on on uh, PVTA's website trying to figure out what routes go where, um, and uh, it seems like there is some differentiation between the buildings. So I think it might be worth evaluating. Okay. Other thoughts? Phoebe's for... hand is up. Phoebe and Paul both have their hand up. Okay. Um, so I, uh, especially in light of our conversation on Friday, um, I'm, I was having a little bit of trouble with D4, minimizes teaching slash learning impacts during construction. That's not the part I had trouble with. What I had trouble with was includes duration and access to outdoor space during construction. Um, I think that there needs to be a little bit more clarity here and possible some separation of those things. Um, I think that um, duration is not well spelled out in there. And I think because there is such a difference, we may want to um, rethink how that goes in there. Um, I think whether it gets its own category or there's some other way to describe that or somewhere else to put that, because I think it could be an educational issue, but I think it's also a, I don't know if it's site or cost or whatever, um, but I think we have to really duration, uh, in other words, contractors offsite date kind of thing needs to, needs to be a little bit more clear because there is such a big difference. Um, and then I also um, think within that same thing um, that access to outdoor space doesn't necessarily equal um, uh, like disruption. I think those are kind of also separate things. I think disruption is quite a bit more than just access to outdoor space. Um, and I don't know, I think it's disruption all the way across the board. So um, getting onto and off the site and everything else. I don't know, I don't really have a great suggestion about where to put things, um, but I think we're trying to pack a lot into that that are kind of separate, uh, separate issues, if that makes sense. I don't know if anybody else has any ideas on that. Phoebe, in listening to you, if we just split it to said um, minimizes duration as one, 
and then um, minimizes construction impact on teaching and learning as, as a separate, just make them distinct. So yeah, that, I mean, I think that, I think that works, you know, because then you've got one is the longer it is. Yes. We'd rather have it shorter. And then the impact is everything while it's going on. Yes. So, so you could, okay. Yeah. I think that works. Thank you. So Margaret, I wanted to minimize this duration, just a simple one. Yeah. So I, I just so I can understand. So the Im impacts on teaching and learning are impacts need, not related to duration. Right. Is you that want, the intention? Yeah, but you need the word construction impact here. It, 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 we saw a site variation. So it probably could this one could even go on site. Um, so because during the construction that so see how it says access to outdoor space that can you got it take the yes include okay and then you can just leave minimized duration it, it doesn't need a definition then does right. that work phoebe i mean it's just one is how long is it taking and the other is while it's happening how disruptive is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think, Kathy, if you wanted to put an explanation, I think it has to, for minimizes duration, I think it's literally how long is construction going on? How long are people going to be on site? Yeah, so, um, you know, so it's, not, we could just I say number of, number, it. we could say number of months, you know, or whatever, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, I'll stop. Paul's hand is up. So I have two questions. If you can go down to F2, Margaret. Yep. I guess one question is, so we, we have that listed as a priority, um, which I wonder if it truly is. And then secondly, <clears throat> um, are we really designing this, this is maybe for Donna, to have potential expansion places sort of plotted out? And, um, or is this just sort of a, a nice to have type thing? So, uh, Paul, I'm glad you brought this up because, Jonathan, I think this one was, you, you had noted this as a priority, but I feel like I also heard um, from Mike at some point that um, if there were expansion of the elementary school population, it might not, not happen here. Mike, am I remembering that correctly? Um, sorry about that. I didn't realize my, I was having connectivity problems with their result, but I didn't have it back on. Um, Did you hear my question? Do you want me to repeat it? Could you say, I think what you were saying is if there's future expansion that it wouldn't necessarily, we'd, another solution would, be, would have to be found? Or can you say it one more well, time? Well, it, it might not be at the site, right? It, it could oh, be, yeah. a, it right? Might... It could be at Crocker. I mean, yes. I, you know, I will say, and I'll let yeah. Donna speak, the, the MSBA process does require us to, for the designers to demonstrate how they would expand the building if oh, they were going okay. to. Okay. Um, but I think based on the context, I'm, from what I remember hearing from Mike, that might not be where you would go first, yep. right? Yep. So yep. Donna, do you or Tim want to add anything yeah. to that? Well, so we haven't gotten into the um, how that would actually play out. I think we could safely say that we have designed the cafeteria larger um, due to wanting to use it as assembly space as well. And that's what's important to MSBA is to make sure that some of the infrastructure has already been designed to accommodate any growth that, that could be, you know, increase in class size, which I know is not desirable, but we will be taking a look to see where we could expand um, on both sites. I think it's, they're both challenging, right? We have, we have the wetlands on one site and then the, physical site constraints on Wildwood. So I think both would be a challenge, equally challenging, um, but, but we can dot in a line or two. What, what you'll probably end up getting and what we've been able to share in the past is, um, you know, maybe a bay of classrooms going up um, towards, towards the end. That would be a little more challenging over at Wildwood because we're building that a little bit into the hill, but we can, we'll, we'll demonstrate that. But I think 
they'll both be equally challenging, um, just given both of the sides. So I guess my question was, is this a priority is for us? Is it a priority? And, exactly. and secondly, is it a category we even want to have be part of our, our matrix for decision making? Since it's, it seems like that's, we're building a pretty big school already. And whether we're saying, oh, that's a high priority for us, that's sort of my, my question. No, that's fair, Paul. And then the, the, yep. the other question to <laughs> ask yourselves would be um, kind of like what we were, Mike was referring to is, now, if you add a, a classroom per grade or whatever, now you're adding an, an additional, uh, say, 20, 25 kids just to, for me to do simple math. You know, that's a, a lot, a lot more students. So it's an extra 150 students per in, into the building. So you'd be designing for a, you know, 650 student school. Is that would that even so be desired? I want to recognize that Tammy has joined us and I see a couple of hands up. Kathy, Phoebe, and then Jonathan. I was just going to react to Paul's question. I think maybe we could, um, to me, it's not a priority. Uh, you know, so I'm not sure whether I want to remove it entirely, but since everything I've heard is that if, if we somehow miraculously got more children moving into town, we want to expand Crocker, then I don't think it's a top priority in my mind for this decision we're making. So I just want to react uh, completely to Paul's question. Okay. That's the only reason my hand was up. Phoebe? So I was I was uh, responding as well. Um, I, I, I am not entirely sure that it needs to be a priority. However, I, I really think that we do, my feeling is that we should keep it in there. Um, and the reason being, I think that there's, I think there's um, need for more affordable housing in Amherst. And if we can create more affordable housing in Amherst, it makes our town more desirable for people um, and for people with kids. I think we have a lot to offer. And I think Amherst is sort of a, a great place to be in general and therefore, I don't know that that we should say with certainty that we're not going to see the kind of um, community growth that wouldn't then impact this school, whether we're looking at it now as we would want to put more more kids in this school or not. Um, I think if we're talking about the next 50 years down the line, it's something that we can't really afford to at the very least overlook. Um, I, I'm not making a statement about priority or not. I'm just making a statement about, I, I don't think it should be removed. I think it should be. So keep it in there. Think about, yeah. Okay. So Jonathan, um, you you prioritized it. What, well, what I think I may have prioritized it when, I think we've done some consolidation. I don't remember thinking that that expansion was a was a high priority to me. What I remember is we may have had a similar one that talked about just general flexibility of design. I remember that mm -hmm. being yep. something I thought important. Um, and so- And that remains up here at number two. I, 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 think maybe I, I would probably prioritize that one. And, and, and you know, I, I agree with Phoebe, I'd probably leave it on, but uh, I, I wouldn't prioritize it. Okay. So I am going to unprioritize this one and ask the question of whether we want to prioritize this one, educational and ped pedagogical flexibility. Yeah, and I think sense. this had to do, Mike and Donnie, you're probably best to summarize this. This had to do with the ability to reconfigure programming within the building as the world turns. So any thoughts about whether that one should be a priority? I'm, I'm guessing that Mike would say absolutely yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really, just bluntly, I, know, I don't want to try not to deviate uh, from the topic into what you're asking into an opinion, but there's significant differences of the educational pedagogy of programming between the ad reno and new construction. So yeah. I, I can wait till we get to that part to share more of that. But um, yeah, I think that's why we're doing this, right? We're trying to build a school that works for kids and teachers. So, you know, I think, you know, all due respect to the other ones, I have a hard time, and from my vantage point, de-emphasizing that. Okay. 
Yeah, I think I think you know that's it's not going to be site specific. It's going to be more building. All right. So I'm not seeing any other hands, and I'm also looking at the clock and thinking we're at nine oh four. So um, if that looks good, Kathy, do we need to? Oh, sorry, Rupert. I just seem to not be able to shut up today. Um, I have a question about the equity category, and I don't know whether this is the right place to bring it up. Um, in in previous discussions, my understanding is, has been, you know, does this promote equity within our community? Um, and the question I have is whether we want to do any kind of evaluation of equity between the elementary schools uh, and and the impacts of, of having two different schools and which district you're in, what effect that has on equity for, for folks there. And it's really just a question I don't really know how to interpret in my own mind and I'm looking for feedback. Mike or Donna, either of you have any thoughts about that? Um. To clarify, I'm talking about between the new building and Crocker Farm. We can't do that one. Yeah, I, I mean, my, my two cents is in the overall picture, sure, but I don't know how that changes our criteria here. In other words, I wouldn't want us choosing a less optimal solution because it's closer to what Crocker Farm is. Like, that seems like, like, you know, just incentives, like, let's make this school the best school possible. And then as a community, we have to commit to improving Crocker Farm over time. And there was some conversation at the last Amherst School Committee meeting uh, about that very topic. Um, I think you were loop, not in, looped into the meeting, but looped into the, the general topic. So for me, I have a hard time. I'm committed, I think, as the Amherst School Committee is to this conversation. I just don't know how this would help us choose between these. And I think someone could interpret, I know you don't, Rupert, I'm positive you don't, but oh, let's, let's not get as many, uh, let's not make this as perfect as possible this go around so that right and i know that's not what you're intending but probably by the letter of the document if we added something along that dimension it, it, it might go down that road does that make sense rupert i'm trying not not at all to be dismissive i appreciate your ideas and what you're sharing i'm just not sure how this gets us to a better choice in the next couple of weeks yeah i i guess part of what's in my mind is uh whatever selection we make, wanting to get as much support from all of the voters in Amherst as we can. Uh, and so that's sort of the basis of the question. Yeah, exactly. So could, I couldn't, I don't know if other people, you, you got very quiet at the end, I couldn't hear you, Rupert. Oh, I was just thinking about um, uh, trying to get support all across the town uh, for whatever selection we choose. Uh, and that was the basis of the, of the question. I see Kathy has a comment. Kathy? I just have a, a really quick one. Um, I downloaded, and I'd be happy just to send it out after the meeting, I downloaded the demographic data of Wildwood and Fort River because of the children, because I just wanted to see whether one or the other had a lot more low income, minority, uh, English language learners. You know, uh, we have a school lunch, and the answer is they're very similar. <laughs> Um, if anything, the Wildwood School has a, there's a, there were some differences, like Wildwood has a higher percentage of Black, but a lower percentage of another ethnic group. Both have very high percentages of low income metrics of special needs. So, so I was just looking for, are we disadvantaging one of the most vulnerable populations? And the answer is no, our schools um, are all serving a, a group. So that made me comfortable that there's not a big difference when we're choosing between the sites um, on, on what we're doing. So that made me much more comfortable on, on the fact that we're consolidating two schools. So it, and I, I'd be happy to send them out because I hadn't realized, I mean, I know Mike looks at this data all the time, but I said, whoa, look, you know, you, you get impressions based on where you live on North Amherst. I always think of North Amherst as the really low income part of town. <laughs> um, and some of that shows up, but nope, we've, we've got low income 
in South Amherst as well. And it, and I know the Crocker thing. So I've, I've got those profiles. And I'll stop so we can get on to what we were hoping to do with today. <laughs> okay, so I think this is great input. Um, the So I think at this point, I'll ask the group, um, there, I think there's two ways to proceed. So one way is to proceed by looking at whether we want to eliminate any options. The other one I would say to proceed is to actually start going line by line and um, grading these. Um, I think the first option, if there are options to be taken off the table, will allow us to focus on the ones that are uh, floating to the top, but it's not up to me to decide. So can I, are there any comments about this approach? Sean, I see your hand up. I would start grading them. I think it, it would get it will become clear when we start grading them if there's ones that are uniform across the board and we could just move on if we feel like everyone has the same rating or they're not different enough between them. Um, but I think it'd be good to start actually diving into each one and grading them. I see Jonathan's hand up. I guess I, I was thinking that uh, a couple weeks ago we had a job opportunity to um, talk about this. It seemed like we might be able to eliminate a couple, uh, perhaps the, the ad reno models. And to me, that would allow us to focus more um, deeply on, on the sites perhaps, but I, I understand uh, Sean's perspective and it'd be perfectly happy going that way too. It sounds like Sean really wants to get started. So um... I'm, I'm fine with eliminating um, options. I just didn't want to go back into the criteria again, but if it's, no, if we're going to yeah. eliminate ad reno, I'm, I'm all, I agree with that. Okay, I see Kathy's hand up. That was my suggestion was going to be where Jonathan just was. I'm um, not to go back through the criteria row, Sean, but when I went through, I, I found it hard to find any place where Adrena was superior. Um, even even on costs, if we can do design bid build, it's not superior, and it was highly inferior. I got a lot of. Um, not favorable in terms of a, a red for it. So I um, thought we had kind of a consensus to take it off the table. And I, and when we met on May 20th and we're talking about it. So I would be prepared to say, um, it's not going to be one of the preferred, uh, preferred option. Um, I'm ready to say that now, so. Kathy, just quickly follow up on that. Um... I just want to confirm, we don't have to grade those to show that it's inferior. It's okay for us just to make that decision now. I'm just trying to remember well, to the last process. I, I thought we had to grade the, the well, reno I, option, but maybe we didn't. I'll tell you what I think I would suggest. If if the committee wants to make that move, I would go ahead and grade the ones that are per, the sort of floating to the top. And I would come back at the end and grade the ad reno mm -hmm. just to you know allow you to focus. I think there are a bunch of reasons that... Um, they probably would not end up with as many favorable or highly favorables as the new. So I don't see any other hands up about that. Oh, Jonathan, is your hand still up from before? And it's gone. There it is. Okay. So Kathy, do you, do you want, maybe we just say we're going to start with grading the new ones, right? And then come back to the ad reno. My kiss is hands up. Mike. I, I just, uh, sorry, I want to support Sean's point. Uh, what I don't want to get is MSBA asking us questions later as to why we didn't rank Ad Reno. I don't disagree yeah. with any of the feedback or comments, but it just been, you know, my experience is because we all said we didn't want to do it, isn't usually they might want more information than that. So, no, no, there's no world in which we're not going to end up grading it. So, <laughs> Great, um, but I just want to make sure. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to make an executive decision here that we're just going to go line by line. Okay, so um, let us start with uh, project cost. So um, I think that in the range of all of these, um, if you were to give uh, the, the green, the highly favorable to um, any of these, it seems as though um, the Wildwood site options are lower, which, you know, I think we all understand is because the, um, 
the Fort River site is bigger and that this is one of many categories. Does it seem right to use the highly favorable or would you all prefer to use favorable? Sean. I did favorable just because all the costs seem high. So it felt weird saying many of them were highly favorable. So um, <laughs> I just went favorable for Wildwood and, and the one step down for Fort River. Okay. Any other kind? I see Mike's head nodding. So then we would use similar for Fort River? You can't use similar because it's, I think, well. That's that's the problem with our scale. Yeah, when, I hear you. Yeah. You no, know, with our scale, if, if something isn't highly favorable, <laughs> then we don't have many degrees to go below it. So um well, and I think it's also that the, you know the terminology of the word similar. I think is sort of awkward here. That one, of, which is why I think the the color is kind of. I if I would think of it more of a color, and it's a distinction between these two options. Any other can thoughts I, about can that? Can I can I ask yeah. a question? I guess I'm a little bit confused. So, uh, and I want to clarify it before we get into more complicated categories because mm -hmm. cost is kind of cost. It's more of a um, so. I was not looking at these kind of in one chunk. So what I was doing was I did like Fort River ad reno, Wildwood ad reno, um, which had kind of a different rating than maybe if we're looking at, uh, you know, so I was kind of comparing them, not just sort of a all of these Wildwood versus all of these Fort River, because I felt very differently if we were talking about, you know, a Wildwood ad reno to a Fort River ad reno is completely different than if it's a Fort River three-story and a Wildwood three-story um, and to each other as well. Um, so I, I just want some clarity on how we're doing this because I don't, I, I want to get it clear now where it's, we're in an easier category than a more complicated one. Well, you know, I think Phoebe, the, the first well, this one in particular, there are more expensive and less expensive options. So I think this one is kind of a weird one to start with in some ways. Um, and maybe, you know, we can come back to this one when we do others. I think with the others, we're going to have to really go column by column. It's just that this one's a little bit binary just because of the way the numbers landed. And the way the numbers landed is completely related to the size of the site because the right. designs are the same, right? that and I think what we're getting for it so I think that was and we're getting what we're getting for it which is what we're going to see in the other criteria okay. below this okay. one is just price it's not what you're getting for the price it's just okay. the price just price okay. to price. cost comparison got it okay so um so how about if we talk about access to public transit um you know I'm gonna talk here and look for reaction oh actually I see Angelica and Jonathan Sands Angelica yeah, I also just wanted to get some clarifications while we're still early in the process, because um, I, I was under the impression from last meeting that you would be taking down numbers to aggregate together to come up with sort of numerical like totals for all of these categories. So I was thinking that the each one of these corresponded to a number, say one for not favorable, four for highly favorable. And so are we just not doing numbers, the one through four and just doing categories? And how would that be aggregated at the end? Well, I think the numbers are tough because the numbers don't incorporate the priorities. So uh, my thought about this is that we could, we will do colors. I think what we're going to see at the end is that we're going to see some categories are going to have more greens than pinks or reds. And um, and then some of those we can then we can sort of overlay the giving the priority is a sort of more intense color. So I I think the numbers are a kind of the, it's easy to do it that way, but it doesn't necessarily then what you is you end up with doesn't result in doesn't reflect your priorities. I see Kathy's hand and I see Jonathan's hand. So. so on, on costs, um, 
I inserted a line for DBB, D design, bid, build, which allowed me to differentiate where the new three stories were highly favorable, the new two stories were favorable, and ad reno was unfavorable. You know, so I, I just, I did, that made it, and I didn't do a big distinction between Wildwood and Fort River. So I'm just saying that that's mentally how I dealt with a line that caused me problems. If the only thing I could look at was uh, A4, where there's, um, you know, and then the Fort River, what Phoebe was saying on Fort River, ad reno at Fort River is more expensive. And there were a whole bunch of other things at Fort River I didn't think worked well with. It. So I'm, I, made that highly unfavorable, you know, in terms of a red. So that's the way I worked with the cost number. So I was a bit interactive with what I was thinking later, as I said, Ad Reno at Fort River versus Ad Reno at Wildwood. Um, so I, that was just, uh, this is a difficult line. And I had, an easy time, I had an easier time when I moved to the next rows. Kathy, do you want to add a line for design bid build? Well, I don't know how other I don't know how others feel. I you know I just mentally opened up a line under CM at risk. I threw another line in, and I knew that the the design bid build are eight million less expensive, so it was an easy number to remember. I didn't even fill it in. I just knew the magnitude, so I left it. But that's what I was thinking between four and five putting. And there's only two num. There's only only the new get designed and built. So I don't know how others think about that, but that's what. Otherwise, I found myself in the odd position of thinking um, that less expensive was not necessarily better. Uh, you know, so that the wild the Wildwood 101 stands out as a, a quite a bit lower, but it's not when you look at DBB. So. Mm -hmm. I see Jonathan's nodding his head. I just found yeah. without DBB in there, it just this didn't make sense to me. Yeah, I, I didn't go through the effort that, that Kathy did to to put an extra line in there, but that's the way I scored it. So I had both the ad renos as as not favorable, um, and then had you know you know favorable or or highly favorable for the other the other categories. Um, and I have to say, like Phoebe, I had a hard time, you know keeping what you get for it out of the, the consideration, even for this line, because mm -hmm. um, it just didn't seem like you were, you know, because you wouldn't bid, you wouldn't actually procure the projects in the same way. The numbers aren't as comparable as, as suggested in line four. Mm -hmm. so, so I think the answer is yes, Margaret, we could just add it in so people will see it in the matrix um, and you don't have to put the whole thing in right now. Yeah. It's pretty easy to do. I'm, okay. I'm, not, I'm not seeing any disagreement. So maybe we can come back to rate it once you get it in. <laughs> okay, so, but it's pretty easy to do because basically it looks like this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Does just that make saying, sense? Well, I'm just saying, I. Well, I, I don't want to belabor this. I literally put it under line four in A, the actual number. And then when I was rating project costs, I took that line into consideration. You know, so it, so my rating wasn't of DVB. It was just one line for project costs. So I needed to have that other line up above in, I can't get my cursor on it, right after A4, I had opened up a line called DBB cost. And then I put the DBB cost in there. And then that allowed me under project costs, the rating to do a rating that made sense to me. Mm -hmm. So this is really a DBB capacity, if you will. No, DBB dollars costs is, you know, it's the, I was literally putting the cost numbers in. I see. You know, in other words, I was, you gave Donna and you all gave us a chart that showed us it was $8 million less expensive and you can only do it. It was 8 million on both sites. Got it. And I okay. didn't, I didn't do then this. Yes, you got it. That's what I mentally did. 
And I just okay. opened up a line for myself without trying to copy in the numbers because I could see the numbers. Then when I rated it, I rated Ad Reno the worst. I read it in red <laughs> and I rated the news favorable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I had had no neutrals. I had, yeah. Okay, okay. Any other thoughts? I do not see any other other hands up. Are we going to come back to costs, Margaret, or are we going to? Yeah. Are we settling with these? Um, I think we need to come back to this. Okay. Because um, I think that we do. First of all, I don't have the numbers in here, and I, I let's return to it okay. and move on. Okay. Okay. So. Um, equity and transition. So access to public transit. Um, we've certainly heard in public testimony and I think that the information that um, Rupert looked at bore out that the uh, Fort River site has more frequent um, service and Rupert, your diagram seemed to suggest that it also had there was more coverage in terms of it being connected, the Fort River site? No, it's the Wildwood site that within a mile has uh, many more routes. Fort has River many more routes. has two routes. Okay. So how should we go about rating these? Um, one of them has more frequent connections. The other has broader coverage. I don't think that's correct. I think that uh, uh, if you look at the table, um, both of them have 20 minute connections nearby, 20 or 22 minute. So it's equivalent. My take, take out from that is that the, the proximity and frequency is equivalent, but the coverage is different. I, I think what I he's see. saying is, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Paul. I, I think what he's saying is that Amherst is a long, skinny town. Mm -hmm. And so there's more north south routes getting close, close, but not as close at close to Wildwood, but not as, but the um, sort of east west route is more frequent. Uh, well, not more frequent, but it um, gets closer uh, by, a, you know, several tenths of a mile um, to Fort River. I see Mike's hand up. I see Sean's hand up. Yep. So um, I've said this before in different ways. I think um, PBTA service in our current setting, regardless of where the stops are, including Crocker Farm and, and other places, um, I don't see this as being something um, that's a huge variable between the sites. Um, I mean, I, I'm happy to be outvoted by the group, but you know, it's not something that's used uh, widely uh, for a whole host of reasons, some of which Rupert kind of, you know, gave testimony to. Um, so for me, this 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 one comes out as, as essentially a wash. Um, I think you know the access, you know, the Wildwood not having a stop right next to it, but also being on lines that are closer to lots of uh, more frequent lines. You know, I, I think we're we're really splitting hairs on that one. Um, so for me, it's it's sort of a you know, and I know I said I don't want neutral. I just, I just don't think these are all kind of similar. You know, um, I don't think it's it's a determining factor for me uh, in terms of access. Uh, I think there's lots of other things we do at the schools in terms of uh, providing buses for open houses and things like that that actually provide access to critical points for for families to come in for uh, to be connected to their child education much more so than PBTA. Um, do not see any other hands up. So, Mike, I think if to if if it were you up to you and Rupert, I think you would say that they are similar. They could be better across the board, and that there aren't major distinctions that we can comment on here. I think the distinctions kind of blend together, right? There are distinctions, but I think in the aggregate it ends up being a wash. Okay. Um, hang on a second. Yeah. 
Sorry about that team. There's a party going on here. Um, okay, so let's talk about accessibility by walking. Comments on this one? I see Kathy's hand up. I see Mike's hand up. I did the same thing on this one as we just did on public transit. Um, there, I see basically no difference between, here we're comparing sites, no difference. Um, there were more students who lived within a mile of Wildwood. However, very few students lived within a half mile of either school. So I just see it as similar. Um, we, we don't have a lot of walkability the way we're currently structured. And, and my only other comment is I grew up in a town with a grade school where we got to school a mile and a half as grade schoolers, we rode our bikes, but Amherst is not a biker friendly place, particularly for small kids. So I don't think most parents would put their child on a bike to go a mile and a half to school. At so I age, didn't yeah. at, at this age. So there was, there were some differences, but I had this salmon colored, this, this, this neutral that I didn't see variations. Mike. I'm going to respectfully disagree with Kathy uh, uh, a bit um, because our, our lived experience is that Wildwood has significantly more walkers than Fort River. Fort River, separate from the proximity, um, it's just surrounded by three really busy roads, right? It's, okay. it's got Southeast Street, uh, Pelham Road, and Route 9. Um, that's the three roads that surround it. So it is separate from proximity. It's just really difficult to walk. There are walkers uh, at Fort River. There's a crossing guard out there. I, you know, I ex see them and experience them. There are significantly more walkers at the Wildwood site. And it's, it's mostly because twofold. One, there's the neighborhood behind Wildwood. So if you think of Wildwood on the Strong Street side, there's a, there's a significant number of um, homes behind it uh, that never have to cross a major road to get to Wildwood. Right, um, and if you go in the morning, you'll see them walking down the big hill from Strong Street, uh, going to the school. And the second is the neighborhoods close to where I am right now, which is the middle school roads. And I see, um, you know, kids walking with, you know, sometimes with their families uh, each morning from that way. So there is, I don't think it's like a, a huge, right? I'm not using the dark green or the red on this one. So on that one, I agree with Kathy, we're talking about shades. Uh, okay. But for me, the I do see Wildwood as more favorable, and I've heard directly um, from families who are very, very concerned about losing that. I mean, Crocker Farm has the neighborhood right behind Crocker Farm as well, which doesn't, even though it's on West Street, it's got a neighborhood uh, like Mount Holyoke Drive and those ones, and families often like to buy homes there because they look forward to walking their kids to elementary school for as long as the kids will tolerate having their parents walk them, uh, which is usually about fourth grade. Um, and um, so, you know, for me, the Wildwood site would probably be in the favorable and the, the Fort River site would be in the similar. You know, again, I, I, don't, I don't cut the distinction with the bright colors, but I do see a distinction. And, you know, we're working with the safe routes to school folks. And they're, my, my initial, what I heard initially is that they are seeing more walkers um, at one site compared to the other. So. My two cents, I'm certainly one of 13 people or however many in this group, but that, that's what I experienced. I withdraw my comment. Well, Mike, I think you're the one with the most direct lived experience of it. Did Tammy and Allison want to chime in? Actually, do yeah. I, I don't see Allison now. And pa Paul's hand is up too, Margaret. Paul, how about? Yeah, well, so, so, uh, I was gonna say the same thing, the similar thing to Mike, but I, you know, in terms of the safe route to school and, and different uh, points of access, you know, cutting through uh, through the middle school um, to Wildwood, I think that is an advantage. And I do, when I look at it, just as a plan, my, put my planner hat on, it's, you know, you know having, uh, you know, Pelham Road and East Street and uh, College Street, there's no getting around those, those are major intersections that people have to navigate, children would have to navigate to get there. And so creating as many entry points to a school that promotes walking, which is what, where we want to go as a community, I think, which is why the folks at the TAC and different folks are looking at safe routes to schools. I think there's some advantages. So I would do the same with Mike. It's not, it's not a slam dunk advantage, but it's definitely a tick up. Tammy, do you want to chime in? Um, sorry, I'm distracted. Okay. Um, 
I, I guess I would have to agree both with what Mike and Paul have discussed. So I don't know that I have anything new other than my own lived experience here at Fort River and my years teaching. Um, I mean, unless there's some magical way of getting kids to school in a way that's really, really safe, I, I just, I feel like Wildwood at least has a, a, their capability of getting kids to school in, safer through walking or biking. Okay. So I don't see any other hands. So, up oh, Phoebe, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I guess what I have is more of a question. I'm wondering if new developments would change our perspective on this. Because if there's going to be more new development down at Fort River, then it might become more, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know that the roads, obviously the roads will not change. The roads will be the roads. Um, but will having more children closer to that school change, uh, you know, accessible walking to it well i mean i i it could if there were associated improvements with the walking path i think it's in this particular case it's it's difficult to put a grade to the future so i would probably argue against doing that um, because i think there are other um there's a whole bunch of other items here that you know make Fort River, a strong reason this I don't think is one of them, but I see Ben and Mike's hands both up. Ben, why don't you go next? Yeah, I would say, so So for me, neither is, is you know, the red or the, the, the dark red or the dark green, but I probably feel a little bit more strongly than, than Mike and Paul about the walkability at, in terms of like Fort River. So you have the, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking about how you would get from the apartment complexes specifically mm -hmm. where you have like, you know, large groups of kids there. Yeah. I, you're crossing like a major route there to get across. Right. So to me, that makes it far less safely accessible via walking. Whereas like there's a direct sidewalk from, I mean, you have like a village park in Olympia. There's a direct sidewalk with one crossing and you're crossing strong street, not pleasant. Right. So to, to me, I, I lean, if, if we're talking about accessibility via walking and, and safety, I, I would feel much stronger that Wildwood is far more safe to walk. But uh, neither is great, I would say. Neither is great. All right. I, mean, I think we'll have a chance to come back and look at these after we get through this, but I think I'd definitely like to try to get through one iteration of this so that we can look back at it um, and critique what we've done. I don't think what we're doing here is permanent. So why don't we move on to the educational category? Okay, so optimizes configuration and adjacency of teaching spaces. Um, I'm gonna say that what I've heard here for others to respond to is that the um, the new options have better satisfy this configuration and teaching item. So I see Mike nodding. So I'm going to tentatively do this and ask for comments on that. I am not seeing any hands. Up, oh, Donna. Can't hear you. Still can't hear you. <laughs> She's getting frustrated. <laughs> we still can't hear you. <laughs> Tim, can you hear what she's saying? I guess you guys are not in the same place. Right? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands on this. So maybe we'll get back to Donna when she figures out her sound. Okay, educational and pedagogical flexibility. Um, I think again, what we've heard is that the new building options do provide 
the flexibility to reconfigure with the changes in curriculum. Mike, do you want to make any comments about that? Yeah, I mean, it's similar to the last the last category you had that I think um, we lose a lot of flexibility in the ad right now. Uh, we lose a lot of uh, kind of adjacency flexibility too. Um, things are sort of stuck where they are and not in the way that we want them to be. And so, you know, I, I do feel like there's a there's a real pedagogical loss, uh, an educational loss in the ad reno scheme. That's no critique of, of Donna and your team, by the way. Um, it's it's an artifact of the part of the building we're keeping and how I think they've creatively uh, designed natural light to get in. The downside of that is it positions where the spaces are in ways that are, in my opinion, suboptimal and uh, locked in uh, that it that's not changeable. So it's not that I'm against ad reno, it's just on, on principle, it's just when I look at the models, um, I, I see them as, as significantly less desirable educationally than the new. I see Kathy's hand up and I um, see Donna putting a thumb up, thumbs up for Mike, what Mike just said. So. Okay, I completely agree with Mike, what Mike just said, but I wouldn't code it salmon, I would call it red. Um, I think this is a negative, this is a negative on ad reno to me. So I would make, and I'm not differentiating between the two sites, I would make it a red. Um, like Margaret, afraid. I have one suggestion just because I'm not on a great big screen. Yep. I don't, I'm not sure we need column C right now. So if you hit it, I would be able to see the faces and see the rating. Oh. If you just did hide the column. Yep. Hang on a second. It's, I'm, I, whoops, go down to, oh, oh, there. It, that just makes it easier for me to see it on my screen. So thank you. <laughs> oh, shoot. Hang on a second. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> but <laughs> well, well, you know, I, I haven't hitched up a big screen, so I've got faces on top of the grid. Um, sorry, I'm going to have to quickly redo this. Um, okay, so we were... No. That's all right. Um, I'm just looking for hands. So Jonathan, while I recode these... Um, yeah, I, these I, my question is more for Mike and whether or not from an educational perspective, he sees any difference between the two-story and three-story schemes. Um, you know, at this early stage, I was having difficulty at times kind of ranking between them. And I was wondering if this was a place where, where maybe there was some difference. Is it okay to jump in since that question was directly tied to me, Margaret? Yes, please. Yeah, so it's a great question. I should have included that. So I thought uh, for me, the ad reno, I agree, should be red uh, and for me, the two-story I found favorable, it should be that lighter green. And for me, the three-story I found highly favorable because there were some advantages, particularly how far people, kids are, and adults were walking uh, to get to spaces that has lots of implications for our educational program and having a more vertical alignment um, reduces some of that. And it also creates for some of our specialized programs, having spaces on each floor that isn't down a very long hallway, which we all three of our elementary schools have pretty long hallways that when um, anyone, you know, but we're thinking of kids are dysregulated uh, are barriers. And so um, I definitely see the two story build new as significantly better than the ad reno, but the I would put the highly favorable on the three story model. Thank you for the question. I should have said that before, Jonathan. I appreciate it. Good point. So I see Tim's hand up and I see Kathy's hand up. Oh no, my, not mine. I'll take okay. it in. I, I am just going to uh, try to be the bridge for Donna's audio's problems and say that she uh, strongly agrees with Mike's comments and that the difference between um, Reno Ad and New should be the, the brighter colors, not the salmon and the green as they were originally um, stated. Okay. I see Tammy's hand up. 
Um, just to add on, I think one of the things I noted when I did the walkthrough at the three-story building was the, how quiet the, the hallways were, I think due in part to uh, less students um, and classrooms per floor. And I think uh, for our students that are neurodiverse have tr tr trouble with um, attention, uh, executive function, I think that that really serves them to a higher degree. I think uh, while a two level, it, I would say be, would be favorable um, because it would still reduce the amount of noise. I think the three three story is highly favorable, favorable because of because of diminishing um, distractions. I see Angelica's hand up and Mike's hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to add uh, to what Tammy said about um, the second versus the third three story. I think also in terms of inclusion, it's much easier to have the different. And uh, for me, the third story is the most favorable, the highly favorable, because uh, for students with uh, particularly special needs and for inclusion, it just allows for better uh, of like a combination of grades. And so it's it's much, much better design in that way. Okay, Kathy. Um, I'm just wondering on the line before on optimizing configuration and adjacency, given what Angelica, should three story be the brighter green? Because it seems to me that part of what we're saying is you can configure the spaces in a way that really helps for the way you teach. So I just would make three story green on that category as well, the bright green. Okay. I do not see any other hands. So I'm going to tackle, um, provides a range of outdoor learning opportunities. Um, the things that were identified were green space for outdoor programs, types of natural environments to study, and adequate space to conduct classes outside. Um, anybody want to take a hazard at this? Mike's hands up. No one else wants to, I'll start. Um, sorry, I'm usually not so chatty at these meetings, but I, I'm happy to talk if needed. Um, so, you know, Fort River is, you know, especially given the work that's included uh, in the cost estimates for the fields, it is more preferable, right? So um, I don't think there's a huge, you know, at Wildwood actually, the, the ad reno, seems pretty okay in terms of green space, um, but the new construction gets much tighter on green space, uh, as I recall the drawings. And at Fort River, all the drawings I think are quite favorable. There's a lot of space back there and the improvements that are, are part of those cost estimates are significant. So, and I don't see much of a difference. I think, you know, the, the Fort River is highly favorable sort of regardless of ad runner or new. Uh, I see the distinction between Ad Reno at Wildwood, which still looks like a si significant amount of green space, but the new construction gets uh, gets much tighter. So, uh, but I see there's other people's hands up, which I'm glad to see. So uh, I'll stop talking now. Phoebe. Um, so I had, uh, I had a lot of the same thoughts. I thought uh, Fort River across the board for me was, uh, what are we calling it? Highly advantageous. I'm trying to... Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the bright or dark green. Um, I also thought the ad reno on Wildwood, uh, I had that as the lighter green, the advantageous. I think, you know, what it is now is, is okay. Um, it's workable, we have space. Um, for me with, uh, especially the two-story option was uh, dark red on Wildwood. Um, and I even put the dark red on the three-story option. I just think with increased parking space with, um, you know, I, I just think all the way sort of across the board when I'm trying to compare these things that always sticks out for me as, you know, just a, it doesn't work. <laughs> Rupert. Um, difference of opinion here. I, I, I think the uh, three-story uh, Wildwood is uh, at least favorable. I wouldn't make it any worse than that, personally. I'm 
So that would be this. So the one that's really problematic is the wildwood. Let me just see the wildwood two story. two story. And the similar, sorry, I used the wrong color, similar for Ed Reno. So it looks like that. Phoebe, is your hand still up? I actually raised it again because I want to ask another clarifying question. Um, so I, when I was looking at these, I was comparing them, not looking at them as standalone options. So I want to make sure that's how we're talking about them and how other people are looking at them. Um, because I, I, in comparison, that's where my mind went in comparison, when I'm comparing mm -hmm. Wildwood to Fort River with the same school options, um, that's how I got, you know, sort of the, the darker colors versus the, the more neutral interior, lighter colors. Um, so I just I want mean, to make that is, that is the purpose. This is, it's a comparative okay. exercise. Yes. Agreed. Okay. All right. Yeah. Then yeah, I'm, I'm strongly on both what I said before. <laughs> Okay, so you the, you would make this one, Rupert thinks this one is a similar and you think this is a no. Kathy and Sean. Uh, um, I, I'm not good, I, I think I'll go, go down. You know, the one thing I, we, we can't three, we can't easily three, see three Ds on these. I don't think the two story works on Wildwood. I agree with Phoebe, definitely a, a more of a red. Um, the three story, will have about half the footprint that the current building has. So we're opening up a lot of green space. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I think of, uh, there are fields, there is a tan brook, there's a lot of things right near it. It's not necessarily owned by the school. So there mm -hmm. could be, there, there's access. So I wouldn't make the three story any less than a, a favorable. I wouldn't make it highly favorable. I think Fort River is highly favorable. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm not really quibbling with the things to the extent I can see the colors on my screen. <laughs> so, okay. Oh yeah, Kathy, sorry. This is where no, I No, I no don't gonna... do any. I don't want you to lose the. Um... <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> It's make sure fine. You, make sure you save this. It was yeah, saved. It's saved. Um, so, Phoebe, I put a question mark on this one where there's a difference of opinion between you and Rupert. Sean. So, um, so I I agree with Kathy. I think the I think the Hawthorne property is right next to Wildwood. I think that gives a lot of opportunities. I think the new two story of Fort River should probably be the darker green um, because there's just so much more space then I, I don't see that to be in the same shade as the three-story at Wildwood because there's so much more space at Port River. Um, and then I just wanted to make sure, I think in the original version accessible by walk-in, we had sort of the light shaded green for Wildwood. I could be wrong on that, but I think right now it's all the same color across the two sites, but um, yeah, somebody else correct me if I was wrong about that. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Alicia, I see your hand up. Yeah, um, I've heard a lot of comments about the Hawthorne site, but that's not something we've ever really talked about. Um, and so I was wondering if we could talk about that a little bit because I'm not sure, like I don't know about how access to that site would actually work for the children during the day and how often and frequently they would be able to use that. Maybe Paul can arrange for Dave Zomek to come and talk about that property at some point. He's the he's the expert on that property. Is it currently used at all for this? Do the kids use it? Does anybody use it? I don't think it's used. Um, but it is, it is it's it was purchased by the town, and I think what Dave had said. But again, we should go to him. Was that was purposely. It was purposed. One of the arguments was its proximity to Wildwood that it could be utilized in the future for recreational purposes. And I believe it was CPA funds. So CPA it's, funds, right? Um, so yeah. Um. 
Um, Margaret, I. Yeah. Um, I also think I, I don't know that I wasn't questioning the um, ad reno option. I, I think we were talking about the three story Wildwood option, I think is where I felt differently. Just to clarify, you had the question mark over the ad reno as opposed to the three story. Oh, got it. Okay. Does anyone want to look at the Wildwood site to talk about Alicia's question, or how do you want to address uh, this? Um, I'm just doing a time check because we said we were going to end at 10 and we're approaching 10 um, on whether people can stay somewhat longer. Because it, the, so, and then what I would suggest is we can come back to this one because to get access to Hawthorne, we would probably have to open up a trail, but it is right there as wide open space um, and it can be used for recreation. We've confirmed that. You could put place, you could put play material uh, structures on there. Um, so I'm just uh, looking to the committee on can we, we've still got a bunch more rows to go. Um, do we want to come back, keep going for, and I think I posted this with public comments. Um, so, we, and we haven't had those yet. Alicia, I see your hand up. Yeah, sorry. I just had an additional comment in that I don't think we should take the Hawthorne site into consideration during our decision-making process because none of those things have been taken into consideration throughout this entire process. Like they're not, the numbers are not included in our cost estimates. That's not something we had planned for. So I just don't think we should take it into consideration when looking at the evaluation matrix. Okay, so I've made a note about that. Um, and, and this one has a question mark on it anyway. So why don't we come back to that and look at minimizes teaching and learning impacts during construction. So again, what I've heard is that the, um, the ad reno versions by virtue of being longer are less optimal. Red, make them red. Make, make them red. Yeah, I okay. think they're red. <laughs> okay. And, the, and the, um, therefore, because this is a priority item, the new construction options are better. So hands on that. I see Phoebe, I see Mike. Phoebe? Um, I would tend to not have the two Wildwood options, the dark green. Um, I think uh, because we lose a lot of, you know, we lose playgrounds, we lose any outdoor space it has. We, you know, I think that I think that there's just more because it's a smaller site, things are more contained. Um, I think we, you know, I think this is one of those areas where there is a big difference between the two different sites. Um, I think everything is closer. Um, and I think, you know, I, I probably would go so far as to put it, um, this again is where it's difficult for me. I, I had it the dark red only because um, it's not similar <laughs> at all. Um, and it's not to me uh, favorable uh, by any stretch, so. Okay, I see Mike, I see Jonathan. I'll, I'll defer to Jonathan, I'll go after. Uh, two quick things. Uh, one is I, I scored mine the same way that, that Phoebe did, um, but was this the one we, yeah, I realized we, we lost some, some edits. Was this the one we split? Yeah. Um, and then there's another edit that you didn't get to, to correct, which was to de-emphasize, provides flexibility for expansion. That's still emphasized. So one was minimizes duration. Yep. And one was uh, minimizes teaching and learning impacts during construction. And I think um, this, Phoebe, the scoring that you're doing is really, kind of for both, right? You were scoring, it's both an issue of duration. And yeah. I think you're yeah. saying for teaching and learning, you would make them all red. I would. 
and right. as as well as duration. How do people feel about the um, minimizes duration on what? Well, the duration though is similar for these new options and these new options. So no, it's not because Wildwood is much, much longer. That's what we talked about on, on uh, Friday. Okay. So Donna is agreeing with you. So there you go. Donna, I really wish you could get your microphone fixed. <laughs> Sean, I see your hand up. So maybe um, Tim can go over the, the piece of Wildwood. So I agree that it was longer. I, I don't recall what the presence was during that, that extra phase at Wildwood. I, I thought it was limited to a parking lot, but um, maybe Tim can go over that one more time because I agree that Forever would be better, but I don't know necessarily that Wild would be the dark red, but I could be misremembering what the uh, magnitude of the that extra phase was and how impactful it was to the school during that time. Sure. Uh, the final phase would be a reconfiguration of that part of the parking lot that would probably have to be configured in a temporary fashion. Uh, so they could do the geothermal well field and parking for um, the school uh, as they're demoing it just because there's not as much room. Um, the contractor would most likely not be fully mobilized, so there wouldn't be trailers and stuff, but there certainly would be work going on site as they did the final completion of whether it's parking or drop off loop in that portion of the site. It, it wouldn't be the full complement of contractors, but it would, it would certainly be work going on site and it, it, there, there would be some level of disruption. Can we see phase two actually, Tim? Or yep. Margaret, whoever's controlling this. It's me. And then how does phase two, how does this differ from Fort Rivers? Because I thought that what we had said was that uh, there would, you know, construction, actual construction through spring of 2027 for Wildwood, but everybody would kind of be off site much earlier for Fort River. So actual building construction and demolition um, would be similar between the sites, but it's that third phase, the um, final disposition of the site. Uh, so there would be site work, um, heavy equipment, uh, paving, uh, possibly curb setting, stuff like that uh, would happen in that third phase on Wildwood, which at Fort River site, since the parking is um, basically there's just more access to it and you don't have to go through it to get to the construction areas or the school areas, it will be available to be, you know, and the geothermal wells will not be under that portion of the parking. It will be available to be um, configured in its final position, you know, during the summers of 24, 25, and 26. So you wouldn't get into 27. So just to conclude my comments, I thought the, you know, when I did my evaluation, I thought about it more in terms of points and instead of colors. So for me, this was sort of a two point difference. I gave Fort River a three and I gave Wildwood a one on this one. Okay. So I'm gonna put a question mark on these um, so that it's more, more pink more pink than red. Um, okay. And uh, actually, just, Margaret, can I just ask one quick yeah. clarifying question? And because this could make a big difference. Um, does that mean, Tim, that the, the geothermal system will be won't be operable for one year later as well? In all new, well, in all the options, the geothermal is operable once the school opens and because it has to be operable when the school opens, that's why you have that third phase at Wildwood because you're taking the area where you would normally be doing parking um, and doing the geothermal work, which allows you, which doesn't allow you to do the parking or the final site configuration. Um, okay, so, you know, so there won't be any, just to confirm, there won't be any loss of that sort of energy savings under either option. With, yeah, with a new construction at day one, you would be operating as a a net zero school. Yes, that's a net zero school. Okay. 
So um, I see Angelica, Alicia, and Kathy's hands are all up. I just want to confirm, is there anyone who has to has a hard stop at this point because it's 10 o'clock? Paul has a hard stop. So Kathy, I think we still have a still have a quorum if Paul has to jump off. Paul, do you want to do you have anything you wanted to add before you left? And then I'll turn back to Angelica, Alicia, and Kathy. No, I'll, I'll watch through it. I watched it. I just have somebody waiting outside. Okay. We have a 10 right. o'clock meeting. Yeah. We'll let you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So Angelica and then Alicia. Can we go back to the coding matrix um, to see that one? So here? Oh, yeah, the coding matrix, because I'm a little confused about what's getting uh, red and what's getting sort of a lighter pink, because I also, like Sean, was working more numerically, mm -hmm. but I found it just numerically. Um, Margaret, your like, screen is still showing. Oh, the, sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I've still got mm -hmm. the other item up. I also found that if I'm going to now convert to more color base, that in terms of the impact that, um, and I'll wait until the chart goes up. Let me just do it. Thank you. There we go. Um, so yeah, I found that for Wildwood, it was for me, I guess it would be the equivalent of the red more so in terms of minimizing duration and minimizes teaching learning impacts. And I think seeing the charts of phase one and two and the proximity of the construction equipment relative in Wildwood relative to Fort River um, mm -hmm. was really uh, impactful for me to, to, um, uh, to, to, to kind of change my mind about the sites. So it's, it's uh, for me, that's a big concern, particularly, um, you know, for kids with sensory concerns, having that equipment so close in Wildwood is really concerning. Okay. So you would, you would vote with Phoebe that these yes, should all be read. Okay. Sure. Alicia. <clears throat> um, so I don't want to repeat what everyone has already said, because I was going to say pretty much exactly what Angelica just said. But so I just want to say that I agree with both Phoebe and Angelica in terms of how I would have rated this. Okay. So let's talk about um, easy access within building to common spaces. So Mike, Tim, Donna, if we've got a microphone on you. Mike. I can jump in. Hear me? It, it's very, your voice is very weird, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> In a nutshell. So maybe you can text Tim and he can, he can tell us what you're going to say. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of access within the buildings, the common spaces, um, you know, I see this as um, another one that's a negative for the ad reno. Uh, and then very, very similar, the same for the New construction, if I, I'm just making sure I'm understanding it correctly, because you know, the new spaces, the common spaces. It's interior, very damn. Okay. Yeah. Sure. The interior spaces um, are quite similar. Uh, um, again, I, I slightly prefer the three story versus the two story, but in terms of common spaces, I don't think that makes a tremendous difference. So it's really for me about new construction versus ad reno than the site stuff, but other people clearly have their hands up. So I'll and, and Margaret, he's saying ad reno is red. All right, I see Alicia, I see Rupert. Sorry, I just forgot to put my hand down from okay. earlier. Okay, then it's, then it's Rupert. I, I just wanted to say I uh, appreciated the uh, question marks uh, in the previous topic because I don't really think that the, uh, the new buildings at, um, uh, at Wildwood are comparable to Ad Reno in terms of duration and disruption, and, and this makes them look comparable. So. Okay. If we could have further discussion, I'd appreciate it. Thank I you. will leave them in there. Any other hands on number six, easy access within building to common spaces? Tim. Um, just again, I think as uh, Don. Donna's microphone, yeah. Um, <laughs> the difference between access to common spaces should probably be the full spectrum um, just because the flexibility afforded by new construction allows you to put the spaces where you need to be and therefore all of your travel distances and adjacencies are just it, it's a big difference so you're suggesting so you're saying dark it green? should be more dark green yes dark green okay all righty 
educational benefits from location adjacency. So this was, I believe this line item came out of the question about what the value was to have the campus, uh, the Wildwood campus. Correct, Mike, I think that was this item. Um, so, um, and it probably should, the text should probably be more clear that that's what it is. But um, Alicia, I see a hand up. And I see Phoebe and I see Mike and I see Sean. But Alicia, why don't you start? Yeah, um, I just wanted to comment on this because this is a, like part of the discussion that I, I kind of wish we would just omit this from our decision making process uh, because like, I mean, we didn't agree on a campus model. I think it leaves out one of the schools. And so I think that this should just be not like, I just don't see this as an option to, to grade the two sites. I don't see it as like a helpful distinguishing factor between the two. Okay. Sean, why don't you go next? Um, so I was just gonna say on number six, um, we might wanna think about whether the two building and the three building or three story and the two story differ. Um, Cause I just remember the, the two story being longer and maybe they're being a little bit farther um, from common spaces um, and for educational benefits. So, so I do think the, the campus model is helpful. So I gave Wildwood sort of the, the dark green and um, Fort River, the similar, the, the tan color. Um, and it's not just the, this proximity to the schools. I thought about the proximity to the, the pools and the, the track and field and um, the other things that are within short walking distance from that site that made it um, very positive. So this is, um one where it's either yes or no. So Sean, I think your grading would be that there is there is a, a favorable advantage to the Wildwood site and a, a, not, a less favorable advantage to the Fort River site on this item. I see Mike's hand, I see Angelica's, Phoebe's and Kathy. I'll be very brief. I don't have more to add than Ms. Sean's, um, but I do see an advantage. I also see an advantage from a school safety perspective um, and as educational benefits, but just being close to um, things here in you know, the number of times we walk up or down from high school to middle school from central office. Uh, I don't think it's um, like a one to four for using numeric. So I, I really, again, don't have much to add, much to add uh, to Sean, but there are adjacencies and some benefits and other ones that could be explored. And that's not ignoring Crocker Farm. I definitely hear Alicia's point of view and, and respect mm -hmm. that. But for me, it, it is something that I think is worth having on here. And there, from my educational point of view, there is some tangible uh, positive benefit. Okay. I see Angelica and Phoebe and Kathy. So just quickly, I found this category a little bit confusing because I wanted to unpack educational benefits more and all the local adjacencies for two reasons. One is I initially wasn't just thinking about campus model. I was also just thinking about, um, you know, the, the fields in Fort River and sort of comparing those kind of adjacencies. So there was just a lot to unpack that I just found that category a little bit harder to rate. Uh, mm -hmm. that I initially anticipated and ended up with a lot of sort of that neutral salmon color uh, because of that difficulty in, in distinguishing mm -hmm. what I mean by the sort of, you know, educational benefits of local adjacencies. I wasn't just right away thinking, you know, one campus model and, and just the adjacencies to the schools. And I was thinking more on overall adjacencies to a lot of other things. Phoebe? Um, so I... Um... Uh, I, sorry, <laughs> let me try to speak again. Um, so I'm not obviously a, a Wildwood uh, mom. I'm a Crocker mom, so I don't have firsthand knowledge. So I, I went and I tried to talk to uh, some people that I do know are parents at Wildwood because I was trying to figure out, you know, do we, the idea of this campus model, like, is this something we utilize now? Like, is there, is this something, are the kids currently at Wildwood benefiting more so from being there? Um, and I couldn't, I, I couldn't seem to find anybody who, 
anybody who was like, yes, because there's all this interaction or they get more access to, I didn't find any of that. So I find it a little bit hard to rate Wildwood higher if we're not doing it currently. Um, and also, I don't think it's in our, it, it's going into our ed plan to take advantage of the things that the middle school and high school may offer to our kids at, on that site. Um, so, I mean, it, it sounds great if that's what we do, but I, I'm not convinced that that's what we do. And, and I, like I said, I don't have firsthand knowledge of that, but um, in talking to people who would, I didn't hear that we utilize sort of this campus model now. I didn't see it anywhere in our ed plan to, to sort of transition to this. And so I don't know how we rate it higher if we're not doing it and we're not including it as something that is important to start to do. Um, so that was just my. Okay, Kathy. Uh, well, given that Angelica wasn't sure even what it meant, I think if we keep it, we have to reword it. <laughs> So if we mean okay. that it, if we need it's we meet if what we mean is that it's right near the middle school and the high school, and um, Phoebe, I've been doing the same kind of questioning. What I think is we're not using some of the potential that should be there, and we you're I've been forwarding the various public comments we're getting. Quite a few talk about the benefit to the extent they're in the Wildwood system of if they have an older child and a younger child that they're coming to one campus. Um, and we have had a few people talk about the children in the high school coming back to the Wildwood group interacting. And Ben at one point talked about custodial staff being able to walk up and down the hill. So I think it is a benefit for the location. I wouldn't put it as a high priority um, and it's we'll have 575 kids there so you know 400 families 300 families that it's a potential uh, because of the location that I think is worth something in the way same way the hypothetical if, if there were more kids living near Fort River could more of them walk I think we could take advantage of it so I'm loath to just take it away, but I wouldn't make it a top priority criteria. And I would definitely reword it to make, so we could make it neutral or we could say it's only a pale green. I wouldn't even make it a highly advantage, you know, highly favorable, yeah. but it's a fact about where the school is located. And, it, you know, if you go and walk, the, the other thing is I've been walking both uh, Wildwood and Fort River, like I think I've done them like six, five or six times now. Um, the nestled inness of it is very much, it's connected to the middle school with a whole walkway and a running way um, with people circulating around. Um, so you do get a feeling uh, like it's part of an education community there that I, we can't replicate. It's the only place that has that. So we, if we don't use it and we give it up, then it's not a big loss. Um, so I'll stop. But I, I think it's a weak criteria, not one of my strong ones. Okay, I see Alicia and I see Angelica and Jonathan. Um, so I just want to say, I like the way that Angelica was looking at it because I was thinking of it exclusively as the campus model. Like that was the only thing I was thinking of when I was looking at it. And to me still, that whole idea is sort of problematic, not only because it leaves out Crocker farm and then we'll have like, if there are educational benefits at all, then there are a portion of our students who won't receive those educational benefits. Um, and then I also just I'm questioning what the educational benefits would really be. I feel like it's more beneficial to the staff and the people working in the building than per se the children. Um, and I, I don't really know. I, I think it would be great if people's kids could be next to each other, but like they're not gonna be dropped off in the same parking lot and it's gonna be a difference either way. Um, so I just don't see those as really highly determining factors. Like Kathy said, I don't see them as a priority or something that is highly going to change my decision at all. So that's why I was like, I, I'm not sure. But if we're thinking about it, like how Angelica was thinking about it, um, in terms of like broader access to other things and adjacencies, I think I would do a similar thing to what Angelica did um, and rate them similarly. Okay, Jonathan. So I, I was going by the, the notes that were 
currently hidden. Um, and so I did the same thing that Angelica did. I, I saw regional schools and I saw playing fields and I was thinking playing fields in Fort River. So I had kind of neutral tones across the whole thing and it wasn't very differentiating. Um, and I'll yeah. just finish by saying it, so far today and, and previous times, I've heard more of a logistical benefit, which there's nothing wrong with, but I, I'm not sure I'm necessarily hearing a, a decided uh, educational benefit, but I'm not an educator. Angelica. I just wanted to respond to Phoebe's um, because I am a Wildwood parent and also a Fort River parent. And so my concern with sort of thinking and evaluating educational benefits is that it didn't seem concrete uh, because we are not currently doing those things. And, you know, it seems like a lot to project that is not concrete yet or it's in, in any sort of real plan that's been implemented that would allow me to grade it any higher than just the salmon color. I'm comfortable with salmon across. Yep. Okay. So building. Uh, let's talk about optimizes use of natural light and solar orientation. I, mean, I think what I have heard, um, and I'm sure Bruce is listening, um, is that the <laughs> existing buildings, the um, the buildings that the ad reno options, because they are were sort of put there before this was a focus, are not. Um, not strong or not in the green category, shall we say, and that the new buildings are, but I'm curious whether people think this is something should, that should be highly rated or um, rated on a sort of pale, paler uh, color range, if you will. I see Angelica's hand. I see Kathy's hand. Sorry, I forgot to put it down. Okay, I, Kathy. I would do dark green and and red as the two. Uh, or, I mean, I, maybe I can be pink, but we can't change the orientation of Ad Reno. So, yeah. um, and we're, so we're clearly not optimizing. So I think it's a disadvantage of, uh, I think I think it is a disadvantage of Ad Reno. So I'm not, I wouldn't make it salmon. I know we don't have shades of red, but it, to me, it's a red. I see, I see Tim's hand up. I just want to jump in and say that there is a significant difference between ad reno and new, both in soil orientation that you have to adhere to the existing building and just where it is. And then uh, the floor to floor heights, the opening sizes that will, there will be significant work done, including demolishing the existing building in the portion that remains that will all improve uh, day lighting, but they will not be able to improve it to the point of a new building. So the difference should be dark red to dark green. Okay. Jonathan. I agree. Okay. I see no more hands. So I'm going to go to optimize this energy efficiency. Now, this is a priority item, but we heard earlier in comment that there will be from Tim that there will not be a performance difference between these. Um, is there another shade of this, which is about uh, per another perspective about this? Tim, do, can you chime in on this perhaps? Uh, they will all be net zero. There will be a performance difference to a degree between renovation addition and new construction. Um, and to get the renovation addition to new construction, you will have to accommodate for that by building more PV. So th there is a difference, but at the end of the day, they are all going to perform to the standards that the town require, but there will be somewhat more investment to get the renovation and addition to perform to the same level, just because you're dealing with a less than ideal orientation of the building, um, a ratio of condition space to exterior envelope, and then you'll just have to add more PV. Okay. I see Jonathan's hand. It's, it's really just another agreeing. It's just that with new buildings, 
you're going to be able to do things that you won't be able to do in the renovation, even though we're doing deep dives into those, those buildings. If we were to renovate them, they'll never be quite as tight or as quite as uh, state of the art. Okay. I don't see any other, any other hands. So can we take up close connection between outdoor and indoor space? I think, Phoebe, I think this might have been your item that it was about a distinction between the two and three story space as it related to how quickly kids could get outside. Can you? Mm, sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, three story, three story proponent. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I honestly don't uh, remember the intent, um, but I, 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 I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't speak to that. <laughs> okay, Kathy, this is one when I went to rate it, I would prefer just deleting it. Um, I think we have a lot of good stuff on the outdoor space. So it was one I didn't think was a major factor. I think we've got some amazingly creative outdoor space that will be connected to by light and air. So it was, my feeling was, I would kind of rate them similarly that two story is a little bit better, which makes the, the, the reno because yep. it's lower slung. So it might be a little bit better, but that doesn't make it favorable to me. Yeah. So it was a funny one because um, I didn't want to give green to something that I otherwise didn't think very highly of. Okay. So, um, Sean. Uh, I, so I have to leave at 1030. So I just wanted to let the committee know and Kathy, I'm your co-host. So I'll have to pass that baton to somebody else. Well, so it's 1025. Um, uh, Kathy, I know, I know we need to take public comment. Do you want to turn, do you want to keep going? Do you want to come back to the last seven items um, on I see, Monday? And let, let me take, uh, Mike's hand is up. I, I mean, it, okay. I know a, a lot of people have work schedules. So Mike, let, let's get a. Yeah, so I was gonna bring up that, but also just from a process perspective, um, my experience is after about an hour and a half of dialogue, right, our dialogue gets less constructive, right, mm -hmm. and less detailed, and so uh, my perspective separate, because I, I, I'm good for a little bit more time, but that if, as people, you know, Paul's, we have the town manager leaving, finance director leaving, we have a lot of people in the town, and we're about to get to site, which is where probably I get much more quiet, and other people, uh, you know, jump in more, so, you know, I would advise us to perhaps stop where we are for today, start the next meeting, with finishing the chart, um, because I'd hate for people not to have, be able to weigh in on some of these issues. So I'm going to take that, Alicia, I will call on you, but I think that's a really good suggestion. And I just want to, um, we meet again on Monday at 830. And if we can, we, we have to get to a preferred uh, choice time-wise. So if people can just figure out, you could send me later, should we should we start the meeting earlier? Can we stay potentially to 11? Because on this, and Margaret would send out the matrix as far as we've gotten now. Yeah. Um, so Alicia, does that sound all right to you to, to turn to public comments now? Yeah, I also have have to leave like I can say a couple minutes after 1030 but I have to leave shortly but I was wondering like can we take a motion to eliminate an option or do we want to save all of that for Monday so, so um Sean pointed out that we should have the matrix in front of us when we're doing it so we could took, take something I would call a straw motion <laughs> um you know a sense of the group um and I'm willing to make it, it, it seems to me as we filled this out that ad reno uh, does not rise to the level of being a preferred option. Um, so I would make a motion that when we come back on Monday, we might start with trying to complete the matrix and make that decision. So I don't know, uh, Sean and uh, Margaret and those that, you know, MSBA, a record that we did the matrix first and then came back and voted on it. Um, but Ad Reno now has enough reds in it that it's not going to rise to the level of being preferred. 
can, can so can we make the motion is what I'm asking. Well, I mean, I think you can, but at this point, um, you know, I think I'd probably just continue with the process that you've started. Um, okay. So I think I think it's becoming clear that the Adreno will not be one be the preferred option. The Adreno versions won't be the preferred option. Okay. But I would probably do what Alicia is suggesting, which is finish it and then take a vote on the whole item, including the elimination of the lines that we've suggested be deleted. So Alicia, I think the answer is we'll, 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 we'll start out Monday right away with that, but I'm um, trying to get to completion. Sean? I, I just want to say, I do have to go. So I was going to see if you wanted to make Margaret a co-host, um, just so you have a co-host in case something happens. OK, um, I'm losing my host. And Not your host, your co-host. You're the host. No, I, no I'm losing my co-host. Make co-host. <laughs> OK, you've been promoted. Thank you. Okay, so Thanks, um, I, so I I would if without any more long winded conversation by me, um, is it all right with everyone if I open up for public comments? And I saw that several people have to leave, um, and we're we're approaching. So we do still have a quorum, but we um, is that okay? I don't see anyone saying no. So we're open for public comments. And my request would be to keep them short if possible. <laughs> I'm not seeing, I'm looking for hands. I don't see any hands are up. They're waiting for the big moment next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm not supposed to be. Uh, I'm giddy early in the morning. So uh, Alicia, is your hand still up or is that just not down yet? Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to clarify because what I meant by what I was saying earlier was that I think we should eliminate an option today um, in terms of how long our meetings are um, that we're supposed to be making our final decision on Monday. And I think eliminating some options that we know are clearly not going to be our chosen options will sort of narrow our conversation points and our focus for Monday, which I think would be really helpful. Um, and I know, like, I think the matrix was something that we came up with as a committee and not something like the MSBA told us we had to do. And so I think like at this point, if everyone on the committee feels strongly that we can tell from this matrix that we don't want to per, um, move forward with the ad reno, I think it would be wise to make that decision now so that on Monday we can come back in more focus. And I'm not saying we don't have to complete the matrix, but I think if we all know, I'm not really understanding the point of prolonging and then elongating the next meeting. Well, I'm, I'm willing to consider a motion. I think Alicia's, Alicia is making a motion that we um, do not put, put forward ad reno as a preferred option. Um, if people are people willing, do we have a second and are people willing to go to a vote for that? A second. Um, I'd second that. Who Phoebe seconded it. So are people ready to vote? All right, we're going to vote. Ed Reno, not, not putting it forward as a preferred option. And Margaret will get decent wording on that motion. Um, I will call out people's names. Alicia. Yes. Kathy is a yes. Uh, ben. Yes. Rupert. I'm a no. I think we should wait until uh, the next meeting and uh, finish other things first. Okay, so you are an abstain? I'm saying no, we should not vote in favor okay, of eliminating. Okay, don't know. Okay, Mike? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Phoebe? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Angelica? We might have lost Angelica. I'm not, um, I'll go on Simone. Angelica? I'm so sorry, I had like another phone call. Are we taking a vote on? Yeah, a vote. Uh, Alicia wanted to move that we remove ad reno. We're not putting it forward as preferred option and we're taking a vote on that. Yes, I agree with that. 
and Simone. I'm not seeing whether Simone is here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We do not have a majority. Um, Simone, Simone, if you are there, um, you're still on the screen, but we need seven to have a majority. And Sean is no longer with us. Allison is no longer with us. And Paul is no longer with us. So we're missing three. Simone? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I'm right. Am I right, my count? Margaret? Yeah, you're right. So the motion fails. We'll have to come back to it on Monday. So I, I do appreciate the effort. Mike? Uh, not to extend the meeting, but just in support of the motion from a process perspective, I wonder if that can be the first thing on the agenda. Yes. Uh, on Monday, so that, you know, if it was a split vote, I'd feel differently. Do respect, I'll do respect to Rupert, but if it was like a, four or three vote and then perhaps not but since it was pretty significant and i think sean was going down this road at the beginning of the meeting that um if it can be eliminated because I, I do think if there's an overwhelming majority of the committee then we can just take care of it at the beginning we'll do that we'll do we'll do that right away we'll set it up that way yeah i do just want to comment to alicia that although this kind of a matrix is not an msba requirement it is pretty typical um, to show um, as a re result of the uh, committee's efforts. And I, I, as, an, as um, Sean said at the beginning, we will need to complete, complete it eventually, so. And just from when we did the designer and before that the OPM, they actually watch our tapes <laughs> of these meetings. <laughs> so <laughs> so they, they do monitor us aside from the words we write. So, so I think we are, we reached the end of, I thought a very productive meeting, even if we didn't get to net potentially narrow options. I think we do have one less when we start on Monday. And I look forward to seeing any, everyone next Monday. And Margaret will send this out to everyone, yep. right, Margaret? And, I will. And, and Angelica noticed that if you try to put a number in, it automatically picks a color. And I think Margaret's going to fix that. So to the extent, yep. extent that's easier for people, it will be fixed when you get this matrix back. So if, Alicia, do you have one more comment or is that just left over? Sorry, that's left over. And Angelica? I just wanted to ask if it's possible to get that as soon as possible and if it's yeah. possible to get the cleaned up by today, because as yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to be traveling, so I won't have access to a laptop after Wednesday. I'll send it today. Send it. And then I, I will also be posting it right away then. So thank you all very much. And I wish you a great rest of your week, wherever you might be, including the travelers. Thank you. We're adjourned at... Uh, 1036. 1036. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Bye-bye.